Greetings ladies and gentlefish and welcome back to Final Fantasy IX. In the last episode we were taking a sojourn through the ice cavern to get ourselves up from down the bottom to up here above the mist. Now, I must confess the purpose of this was never fully explained. Essentially it's more that, well, they need to get somewhere and let's just try and get somewhere. This is somewhere they thought they could actually go to. Uh, there's two little detours we're going to take. Oh, there's an airship. Hello! <laughs> there's two little detours we're going to take before we actually get to the village itself. And if you just let Zidane stand there long enough, he clearly gets bored and starts yawning and stretching. Now, firstly, we visited Northgate earlier on. Ah, uh, god damn it. Damn you, wildlife getting in my way. I shall have to put you down. What wildlife is it? Is it going to be something new and interesting? It's a... Uh, yeah, it's a carved spider. So, the python we've seen before... Oh, it's another back attack, for goodness sake. Right, the python we've seen before, this just does the stuff that we're familiar with the python being able to do. Nothing new here. Um, let's just change the order of these guys. The carved spider does physical attacks and also does that web shot thing on people. That does a small amount of damage, but more irritatingly, it puts the slow effect on them. So their ATB gauge fills up, fills up more slowly, and essentially, it takes them longer to do anything. Uh, now, it is a bug, so that means that Steiner's bug killer ability will enable you to do more damage to it. I shouldn't have had BB. I did that the wrong way around. I meant to attack the Python this day or whatever. Um, so as you can see there, instead of doing around 50 to 60 damage, Steiner did like 70 to 80 damage with his regular physical attack uh, against the spider. So that is nice. This is where these killer abilities uh, do come in useful. Um, once Steiner has learned Beast Killer, of course, I'll swap the broadsword out for an iron sword. That will boost Steiner's attack and do a bit more damage. Because he is rather languishing behind... Uh, Zidane at the moment. But I mean, against some opponents, that's kind of offset by the fact that he has killer abilities that Zidane at the moment just doesn't. So Zidane has almost got those done. I'm just double checking equipment once again. It's always worth just checking your equipment to make sure you're happy with it. Um, da -da -da, da -da -da. Oh, we've got an Iron Helm now, so he's learning Bug Killer from the Bronze Helm. Once he's learned that, I'm probably going to skip out the Rubber Helm because we'll equip the Iron Sword to learn that same ability, and we'll go to the Iron Helm, which will learn Bright Eyes and Level Up. Beast Killer from the Broadsword, yep, that's fine. Mage Staff, haven't got an alternative. Leather Hat, sure. Uh, leather Wrist, still learning Blizzard from that. Silk Shirt, that's fine, and we don't have any accessories. And then that leaves the Princess Dagger. So, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't call her Princess Dagger, that rather defeats the point. Dagger will go by that name from now onwards, um, or at least for a very long time. And there's only a short intermission where she does not. So we're going to take a visit to Southgate, which is where this is. Huh? What do you want? I want to talk. Southgate is the border of Alexandria and Limblum. So Northgate was Alexandria to Bermesia, Southgate is Alexandria to Limblum. We check every airship and person crossing the border. We're doing the best we can to keep the two nations safe. Have you ever been on an airship? Did you say the same thing? Yeah, he just says the same thing. Um, I want to take a break. The shop girl at Vega won't be here for a while. I can wait. Then wait right there. That's it. <laughs> I want to pass through. You're going to have a gate pass. You've got to have a gate pass to pass through here. We don't currently have a gate pass. Uh, there's no work here right now. Try again when they need construction workers. So basically, this is the uh, nation state of Limblum going, well, you need a visa, a work visa. Part-time worker Mary. Hello, I'm Mary. I work at Vega, an item shop. So let's go and talk to Mary. And now... If you've waited long enough for her to turn up, part-time worker Mary, sorry to keep you waiting. How can I help you? I want to rest. I want to shop. Let's see what her wares are. Nothing particularly spectacular. Now, once again, 
uh, in a while, there will be another boss fight that Dagger is inconveniently indisposed for. So you are actually going to want those potions and high potions. However, you're going to have another opportunity to purchase them anyway. You don't have to do it here. So I'm not going to buy anything from her. What I will do is say I want to rest. However, don't take this option. She will charge you 100 gil for the privilege. But when you enter the next town, you will automatically be fully healed. And that's about all that you can do at Southgate for now. Um, that's really all there is to do. I mean, it's not... It's You will come actually come to Southgate proper sometime later. Um, but I thought it, I'd visit it now just for the sake of completeness. And now you can see it's marked on your map as Southgate and all that good stuff. So, that's Southgate out of the way. Let's continue on our merry little journey. And you can see that the enemies are getting harder now. I mean, these are pythons. We've seen pythons before, but this is three of them. So again, it's just making it that little bit harder. Not that hard, but a little harder. Go on, Zidane, do your thing. Oh, come on. Stop wailing on him. Uh, I am going to whack the hero on Zidane just to make sure he doesn't uh, flank out. Everyone will be fully healed as a save when we get to the next settlement anyway, so it's just making sure that um, Zidane is in one piece pretty much, and he should be able to one hit this one. Yeah, Vivi takes a little bit of damage. What you tend to find is your magical characters have quite high magic defense, relatively speaking, and so they're like, meh, magic is cast on me, it ain't the end of the world. Whereas your physical characters often have kind of slightly lower physical defense. And Dagger levels up to level 6. So that level discrepancy we did have for a while has kind of been closed. It's just not that important. Now, the settlement that we're going to is that thing to the left with what looks like a windmill. But before going there, we're going to pay a visit to the observatory. Uh, observatory Mountain. We will actually... You do have to visit this later on anyway. Um, so you can pick up these items subsequently, but I thought we might as well do it now. Um, let's attack the second one, and then Steiner should be able to finish off this spider. Oh, they also cast magic, by the way, that I hadn't noticed before. I hadn't remembered before, I should say. Go on, Steiner, do your thing. I could use Vivi's magic here, actually, but meh. No. Now, Zidane has learned Detect and Flee, so at this point I'm going to equip him with the Mithril Dagger we got from uh, the Black Waltz's Sea Lion, and his attack is going to go up yet again. You do get quite a lot of weapons for Zidane. He is the main character, and he is the one that you play with most. Now in the last battle not only was Zidane doing a hilarious amount of damage because he's now got the Mithril Dagger, after the battle we actually learn Protect Girls and so we might as well equip a Silk Shirt at this point because it just slightly increases our stats and also reduces Thunder Elemental damage that we take um, as he's learned the corresponding ability. Anyway, we'll soon learn Flea Gill from the wrist. Um, and at that point, we're waiting on Vivi to finish learning Blizzard so that we can give Zidane the Leather Wrist, although we will get one again later on, um, in order to allow him to learn Beast Killer. Now, here is Observatory Mountain. We're going to pay a visit here. You do come uh, across this area later on. You do not have to visit it now, but, you know, why not, basically? So, um, we are going to go over here. There's a couple of things we can pick up, and I thought the money that you get here would be useful. There we go, 135 gil. Would potentially be useful um, later on uh, when we get to the village and want to buy some things, essentially. There we go. And there's a high potion as well. 
that's pretty much all this place has to offer for the moment, but I'll just show you uh, around. If we go up the staircase, we get to the top of the observatory. What is that? Looks like a wind vane to me. Um, this is all there is at the top, and if we come down, there's an old man called Morid who lives in the hut. Uh, he's part of a side quest later on. It's not a particularly important side quest, but it's not that difficult to do. About collecting coffee, of all things. Ah, my coffee smells delicious. Actually, while I'm here, I might challenge this guy to a card game, just to show you the card game, actually, before we get to the village. You can also see there's a model of the theatre ship, by the look of it, the ship that we were on to flee Alexandria, just floating there in the background. Would I like to play a card game? Sure, why not? I'm telling you now, I'm not very good at it. Just what I like to hear. So... For this card game, Tetramaster, it's going to give you the rules, because we've not done this before. So select five cards to play. I'm going to pick cards that have duplicates of, because why not? But I'm going to try and pick ones that aren't too terrible. So we're going to go with that one. That one. Um, that one. We're not going to pick any of those because we only have singles of them. That one. Is there any particular direction I'm missing? Yes, there is. And that one. So confirm selection, yes. Now you'll notice each of the cards... There we go. Um, so the battle begins. Place a card next to one of your opponent's cards. If the arrows on your cards are facing your opponent's card, you have the chance to capture it. So if you look here, each of the cards has an arrow, a series of arrows pointing in different directions. They are the directions um, in which they can attack and defend themselves. So if you place a card with an arrow pointing in a direction next to your opponent's card that doesn't have an arrow there, you automatically capture it, and vice versa. If you both have arrows pointing in that direction, you get in a little bit of a fight. Now, that fight is determined... Uh, there's a bit of randomness to it, but essentially you have on your card three numbers and a letter. The letter will be P or M, and that denotes whether it's physical or magical damage. And the numbers basically denote how strong that card is. Uh, firstly, its attack power, and then against uh, how good its defences are against uh, magical and physical attacks. So, just to kick proceedings off with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this goblin... No, I'm not. I'm going to take this flan. it has got an arrow pointing upwards, and I'm going to put him right down in this corner. So, in order to capture him... My opponent has to put a card where the two, um, like, uh, he doesn't just get a free capture. The game ends once all cards are in play. The player who captures the most cards is the winner. So he has currently captured my card. He does not have any arrows pointing upward, so what I can do is place a card that hopefully will capture his and also keep myself relatively well defended against any particular counterattack. So we'll capture that. Right. So we've now got two cards here. Now this is where it's getting ever so slightly awkward and it's entirely possible that I'll lose this, but that's fine. I've specifically picked cards I don't mind losing. Um, so I'm just doing this to demonstrate. If I take my skeleton and put it there, I have a choice of who I want to fight because there are two potential fights that I could take part in. I am going to choose this one because if I fight against this guy, he has an arrow pointing this way which will cause a chain that will mean I capture the flan as well. So we're going to choose this one. It actually works. We get a combo and we capture our card back. However, he kind of does likewise, which is pretty irritating. I now don't have any cards with arrows pointing to my left. That was a bit of a weakness of the selection that I chose, and that is kind of annoying. So I am almost certainly going to lose at this point. Um, but we're going to put... Let's put a fang here. And uh, I guess we're going to put a goblin here. There we go. He actually ends up winning 9 to 1. I was at a bit of a disadvantage. Well, there were lots of fights there that could have gone either way, and I ended up losing, I think, all of them except one, which was slightly irritating. And so you lose a card when you lose a match. You win a card off your opponent when you win one. If you win with a whitewash, so 10 0, you gain all of their cards, and conversely, if you lose that way, you lose all of their cards. I'm not going to play a rematch now. Like I said, I did a match specifically just so you could see what it was like. I'm not intentionally to win. 
Obviously, I tried to win, but eh. RNG! Everyone loves RNG. Anyway, that's everything that Observatory uh, Mountain has to offer you. So with that done, our destination is here to the village of Dali. So we're just going to uh, call a Moogle and we will save things here for a moment. Next time, we will come back and explore the village of Dali and try and give it the due that it is well due because there are some fairly important plot points that take place within the village. Um, so I don't just want to do them in a hurry or anything like that. So with that said and done, I hope you'll join me in another video and I will see you then. Ciao, ciao.